My name is Pastor Daniel Yawin. I'm speaking today on what I called the effect of loving God. What is the effect of what is if I say I love God? What will start happening, not just to my life, but to that of my friends? There's something that happens when a man loves God. Today I want to share it. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 5. You shall love the Lord your God. This is a commandment from God. It means that God said there's no ambiguity in this one. We, you shall. It's a definite article. So, <laughs> when God was bringing his children out of Egypt, he began to speak to them and give them certain commandments, laws, statutes. And one of them, most important, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. You shall love the Lord with all, all your heart, all your soul, all your might. What it means is that sometimes you can love God with half of your heart. Put your hands together for the very honest. No, we love God, but please, use your brain. Eh? Me, I've done masters. I'm doing doctorate. You, we have to use brain. We don't love God like that. After all, I love God before you. God knowing that sometimes we can love him halfway. He says you shall love the Lord with all. Somebody say all. all. Praise the Lord. He says you must love God with all your soul. Ah, you said the person is your love, lover. Why are you not saying, I now know that love is sweet. So before that, what was it? Because when you have not loved all, you will not enjoy the all that comes with loving all. You can love somebody because of her boobs. But God forbid, if she gets cancer and they remove one of the boobs, shalalala, your love is half. Is that the truth? Sometimes we love people because of what we will get. But God is saying, when it comes to me, love me with everything. Love me with all your might. For a whole thing in Adonia, me. Ah, there was a video that was circulating. I think it was a picture on social media. With a guy kissing a girl and this place has gone in. The veins were kissing, not wedding. Wedding day, the kissing. He had held the lady's head and was... Hey, that is loving with all. I said, Messi, near when your door, and yes, and what do you know? God wants us to love Him with all. Have you seen somebody watching football and his team is losing before? When it's because ah! the emotions they go through is serious. And when C. Ronaldo scores, ah! That ladies can even remove their top and forget. I've been to a stadium once. That was when I understood why we go to stadium. Ah, Lord. The feeling is different. I'm telling you. See, even if you're a well-mannered, well-behaved person, because your heart and mind is following the wall, the way they are going to score, your leg will be doing this. <laughs> Charlie. No, 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 no. It is so serious and intense. That is loving with all. That people can weep because their team has gone. Ah, you see that somebody is weeping. You lose appetite. You, you, ah. You can die. You can have heart attack because of football. That is loving with all. Because when people love things with all, it's a serious matter. God is saying, you shall love me with everything. In other words, you must be a passionate seeker of me. God doesn't want partial love. See, when God sees you love him with everything, he doesn't make demands on you. Yesterday, something happened. I, had not, I think I ate early morning, and I'd run through town the whole day. I was very hungry. I went for different meetings. So around 5, I wanted to, 5.30, I left my last meeting. So I wanted to go to... Um, holiday in to just have maybe I knew, I knew that dinner will not be ready but I can do a la carte but on my way there was too much traffic 
So I said, oh, let me just go home. So I switched. I changed my Uber destination to the house. Whilst I was coming, I sent my wife a text that I'm very, very hungry. I was at the church. When she saw the text, oh, where are you now? I told her, she says, I'm coming home. I said, no, 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 no. Stay at the church. She said, no, 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 no. I'm coming. I said, you do the last song before you come because I'm on the so I'm still on the road coming because there's too much traffic in town because of the rains. Still coming. And she tells me that I'm on the beach road, I'm coming. And I'm begging my wife to no, 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 stay. He same Daniel who is here. Who the wife is now running to come home and fix me food. If I told her that I'm coming home, and she had told me that, oh, okay, then maybe get something on the road to eat. Guess what? I'll be pissed. If I'd got into the house and she was not there, I would be pissed. She had come home to cook some food and said, okay, when, when you get home. But that she made an effort because I had a need and she was leaving other things to prioritize me made me now not want it again because her gesture had made me fool. This is how God treats us. That when he says he has a need, and we also have other things that are competing with the need of God, and we will leave the other things and focus on the need of God, God will account it as righteousness unto us. This is what, this is what the Bible says, and Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. In other words, Abraham stopped planning with Eliezer, but trusted God. He left everything and said, I will trust him. And God said, ah, that is what I seek for. When the Bible says God looks at the heart, this is what it means. It's not what you do in the natural. It is what motivates you when it comes to God. That is what will cause God to go beyond himself and cause people to give you. I stood here and I said I was going to buy something for somebody and I knew it will honor God. And when I didn't have money and I called my brother for the money for it, Somebody from America said, God said to me to send you money now. The young man gives everything. This guy says in Medina, as to whether you walk or not. Well, if he's told you that, I've given the money. Now I don't know how we'll go. When God saw that, God released the money for the wedding that they did how many months ago? It was an excuse for God to visit them. God was teaching him that when you love me, I assume the responsibility to take care of you. But it has to be your all before I can step in with my all. Brothers and sisters, excuse me. I don't come to preach because I want your money. Because with all humility, I am richer than you. I have money more than you. I get money on continual, consistent, daily basis than you do in a month. And so if I need money, I know how to make money. I'm a businessman. By calling. With all humility, I'm I'm being honest with you. So I won't come and stand here and preach you because you will give me 200 CDs or 500 or 1,000. I've passed that level. Your 5,000 that you dream of, I've passed it. By the special grace of God. Even your hundred thousand have passed. But that you will experience what I am enjoying. That is what I've come to teach. The secret is you must love God with all. See, I'm looking for people who go crazy for God. When you go for crazy for God, if sometimes we cry, she will say, hey, are they, I said, I'm hearing too much. Oh. oh, my daughters came and said, looks like now people are saying I'm becoming very spiritual. What's that in book? Continue. Because when you start loving God, see, people will look at your face and give you things that will take you 30 years to achieve. Ha, sir. I've come to church one day, I've given everything. I went for a meeting somewhere. Organized a meeting. I just organized a meeting. When we finished, the person gave me $3,000. I said, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The person what? What? I want to see somebody. Let's have a meeting. I said, so, then... Just take this $20,000. Which work will I do? Even the perfume I use, I just have to desire. God will bring me specifically that perfume. Love 
God with everything. The things people are chasing after. God will pressurize people to bring it to you. Oh, he's asking you, love me. Spend time with me. Talk to me. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? So God requires certain things from us. But, number one, to fear the Lord your God. In other words, always, always have at the back of your mind that God is with you. Have this, a, a, a sense of awareness of God's presence. That's what this fear means, reverential fear. But to fear the Lord your God, always have respect for God. Number two, to walk in all his ways. All what? Hmm. And love him. God wants us to love him. And to serve. If you say you love God, you must serve his interest. You must serve the interest of his kingdom. Serve God. We don't want to serve him. Serve God. You've been in this church for how many years? You are not doing anything for God. So why shouldn't you die? Can you tell God that God, because of what I'm doing for you, keep me alive? See, you can go to God and tell God, God, because of what I'm doing in church, I can't be sick today. No, 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 God. I'm not saying homo. But this running nose, it must stop because, have you seen somebody with a running nose greeting people before? God, this nose, I will go to church. But by the time I get to the church, I won't clean it. Let it come and greet because you must. He says, serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Why is God keep saying, why is God why does God keep saying that all, all, because God wants complete devotion from us. Write it down. God wants complete devotion from me. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1. He said, you shall therefore love the Lord your God and always keep his charge, his statutes, his ordinances, and his commandments. He says, you shall therefore love the Lord your God. He puts your God there. He says, you have made a decision to, that God is your God. You have personalized him, love him personally. When you see Marilyn and you see his mother, no, no difference. There's no difference between the haircut and the mother's haircut. The way they laugh, they say. The beauty, they say. So if you want to see Marilyn's future, look at the mother. It's as simple as that. In that same way, God is saying, if, you, if people want to see your future, let them see me. Love me means come to me. See, let me be embraced with you. Let me, let me, let me love you. Let me, let me put myself around you. When, when people see you, they will smell me. That is when they begin to favor you. God says, you must love me. I, I want to teach you what I know. That's God speaking of. That's it. Love me with everything so that I can teach you my everything. So that when I teach you, you do it. As you do, I confirm it with signs and with wonders following. But you, you don't want it. You want to go to a trap so that you will not listen to your father's instruction. That when you travel and your ear block, you think it's a witch. When the church you belong to, that is not what they teach you. Because ignorance is not an excuse. Which voice are you listening to that you... Ha, that God is with you always. Is it not what God said? Till the ends of the earth. Your ear blocks, you think it's a witch. Because you see, as humans, we want activity. We don't want relationship with God. We want what? Activity. You have spent time with God. God has given you promises that I'll give you a visa. You will go outside. He now opens the door for you to travel. Buys your ticket for you. If God buys your ticket for you, will he not lead you to the place? That when you get there, a witch can block you in the air. And you'll feel far better for me, it's serious. <laughs> they are stronger than God. What nonsense. Am I communicating at all? Yeah. What I'm just trying to tell you, God wants you to love him. So that if a door closes, it is God who permitted it to close, not a witch. That is the level you must go to. Have you heard of it before? That a man goes to sleep in a hotel. And the owner of the hotel or the manager of the hotel is the one who takes him on, on a tour. Does it make sense? Ha! Huh? That your God, is it not God who says, I'll go ahead of you and cause the crooked ways to be made straight? He says, valleys will be exalted. That God will go with you. But before we make my block, 
No, 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 no. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God says, if you love me, love me complete so that I will take absolute control over your life. Or else, if you are not careful, another doctrine will speak to your ear. Let's look at Deuteronomy 11, verse 13 to 19. It says, And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandment, which I command you this day, when? To love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. So every land has a rain that must fall on the land. He says, when you love me and you serve me, I will give you the rain of your land. So I know your land. I know the amount of moisture that that land needs. I will give it to you in the season that you need it. He says, the first rain and the latter. I didn't know that there are two rains. That there's a first rain that must come to water your land. And there's a last rain that must come to complete that which has been watered. He says, just love me and save me. I will do the rest. I know your season. I know the land. I know the season of the land. Love me. Oh my God. Is it too much to ask God? Continue. That thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. He said, you gather three things. Your corn your wine, your oil. One day I'll teach you about these three things. Corn represents provisions. All your corn is for your sustenance, it's provision. Wine represents joy. So God says, you will gather, you'll be happy in your marriage, but I am the one who will give you a good wife. Yes, I'm a baby for. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of pastors who are not happy. A lot of ministers are not happy. A lot of Presidents, they chase girls. They are not happy. Look at it. And I will send grass in thy field for thy cattle. I said, me a serious matter. I will send grass in your field for your cattle. So God knows every little detail of your life. God is so much interested, including the sustenance of your cattle, your, your investments, your businesses. God is the sender of people to you. You are not the one. Love him, I will do you go to a child looking for grass. It, 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 grass, eh, you know, be, you know be the land where they bring. I send it so that it will feed your cattle. I send it. I send the rain. You have gone. Ah, it must rain. No. Ah, I've been taught that eh, rains fall when there's evaporation and, 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 and condensation. And, and what? precipitation and then it will it will fall as rain so based on my geological knowledge of of of, of how rain happens i conjure the rain also i say no 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 god say that's not how you no 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 i know your season i know where you are dwelling i know how to send the rain and the rain there are two kinds of rain there's a former rain and there's a latter rain. He said, when it comes to your cattle, I will send the grass. He didn't say, I will cause the earth to grow grass. He said, I will send the grass. Church, see, there is a dimension of, the, of, of, of God that most of us have not come into. All we know is Hayan, Hajan, Hajan, Kayo, Hayan, Kayo, Hayan, the witch in my father's house, Kayan, Kayan, the demons in my father's house, we control, hey, hey, Shantosh. Uh huh. It has its place. What am I saying? What I'm saying is beauty is vain. It means that no matter what you get, somebody has more. Because they love me. Because when you love me, I can put a glory on you. When your husband sees you, hmm. Uh, my cousin was married to a man on uniform. This is the man who washes the ladies' clothes and everything. All of a sudden, my sister gives birth. Then my sister started focusing on the baby. No more praying. My sister just go to church of Pentecost. Stop praying. Stop spending time with God. He's my baby, my baby. I don't know what happened. No. The man was now seeing the lady like a caricature. No, I'm serious. Started gallivanting over girls. Now here a baby in the year beer bin in the one beer in the tea beer beer or the genawa. Them and a pen and I'm like, child, something has gone. See, listen, please don't boast in your beauty. 
Boast in the fact that you know God. Because, see, when you focus on other gods and God steps away from you, your husband will see you like a demon. No, no, no. Yeah, you, you think that, oh, my name is Isaac. I'm a fine guy. I drive a Mercedes Benz. You know, so, so everything is... No, no, please, don't lie to yourself. Oh. It is because you used to love God. God placed upon you his grace. See, there is a dimension of God that you don't know. All he wants is love me. And the things people spend money to do, I will do it for you without struggle. Because I love you. Love me. First. I know you have children. I, I know you have a husband. I know you have everything. But love me first. There is no way I can love Irene more than God. God forbid. You have to choose God and Irene. Uh, it's not, we don't even have to think about it. It's not an if. It's chosen already. She can love me more than God. I, see, let me be honest with you. You can't love people more than God. Because everybody will leave you. Your children, that you, you, they are selfish, self-centered. You, are you not selfish and self-centered? How, many, how much do you give to your mother? How much do you give to your father? All the money that your father and mother that look, uh, take care of you. Look at how beautiful you are here. When was the last time you took 10,000 and sent to your father that, 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 uh, why you been bothered? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You are an honest person. God bless you. Yet your father sacrificed everything to take you to school. So these children that you are dying for them and killing yourself for them at the expense of God, the moment they are of age, like Angela and they look beautiful, they will come and tell you that, Ma, may worry? The house that you have killed yourself to build, don't want to them. Am I preaching good? So love God! Then the rest you can give to your children. My son says, yeah, if he goes, he doesn't come again. I don't know. Maybe he will come. Maybe he won't come. My son David, didn't he go? Yes. Has he come? This boy that I thought he would come, he would do ministry more. He, he sent me a text that he's getting married. What am I saying? Whatever it is that we are holding on to, we will lose it. But our relationship with God, we cannot afford to lose. Our love for God, we cannot afford to lose. Our desire to be right with God, we cannot afford to lose. You can lose everything in this life, but never lose your love for God. Take it to yourself that your heart not be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. And he shut up the heaven that there be no rain. And that the land yield not her fruit. Unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul. And bind them for a sign upon your hand. That they may be as frontlet before your eyes. Between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children. Speaking of them when thou sittest in thy house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. Deuteronomy 11, 13 to 19. You, you, are you seeing? So God is saying that, I want you to even teach your children how to love me. Teach your wife how to. You can't be, you, one of my daughters, she loved God I had that. And they are, she was, when you start getting to a certain age, once in a while I come and ask you that, have you gotten a boy or something? He said, oh. I said, no. I said, why? He says, the guys who are coming around, none of them wants to do ministry. I said, ah, do you want to marry a pastor? He said, Pastor, that's the standard of introduction. If you don't want to serve God, you cannot even date me. I, I don't have time for you. you, you. I said, huh? He said, yes. If, if, you, are not, if, if you don't want to serve God, you, 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 I don't have time for you. He said, I can't date you. How, what, what conversation will we have? Because I want to talk about God and things we can do for God and his kingdom. What are we going to talk? You are coming to press my breast. No, when I marry, my husband can do that. But So if you are not called, you can't even be my friend. Can Tam come and ask me out? Sweet, beautiful lady. Her love made her separate herself from the pack. Say, everybody can marry. Ah, Pastor, I'm ready to wait. Oh. If you are not called, or you don't love the things of God, you don't want to do ministry, out. This is extreme, but what I'm saying is, when you are talking, make the, your, the people you are working, let them know you love God. Let them... Let them call you sister spirit. And so what? I love God. Because when you start talking about that, they can't press you. 
So why must I do that? Deuteronomy 30 verse 16. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. To walk in his ways and to keep his commandment and his statutes and his judgment. Why? That thou mayest live and multiply. So when you want to experience multiplication, he says, the reason why I'm telling you to love the Lord is because I want to see multiplication. I want you to, I want, I want to, he says, I want you to not just live. I want you to live and experience multiplicity of things. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land with that thou goest to possess. He said, wherever land you want to go and possess, if you will love me, I will bless you in that land. Amen. Irrespective of which nation and the prevailing economic condition, I will bless you. That's why the Jewish people are blessed all over the world. He says, if you will have long life, if you will experience multiplication, if the Lord will manifest blessings on you, when you enter into new spaces, you must first love him. You must what? Yes. Psalm 31 verse 23 says, Oh, love the Lord. All you his godly ones. The Lord preserves the faithful and fully recompenses the proud doer. All this prayer that you are praying that which which is coming, which is coming. Love God. No witch will follow you. I don't remember the last time I prayed against witches. I don't have time. I just love God. As I love God, God puts my wife's love in my heart. Then I'm loving her. As she loves God, God puts her love in my heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so what does God say? Psalm 37 verse Verse 3 to 5. He says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Ah, look at the scripture. Delight thyself also in the Lord. So there's a difference between trusting. You know? When you trust in God and you do good, you will dwell in the land. He says, And verily you shall be fed. This is what you do. You trust God. So when you want to eat, you trust God so that he will feed you. <laughs> Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Look at it. When he comes to, he comes to whatever you desire in your heart. Other desires. Ah. Like Nana Kwame carry my cake. Nana Kwame drive me. Nana Kwame bath me. Nana Kwame feed me. He says that, that one, uh, you have to first delight yourself in the Lord. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he says, the desires of your heart, I will grant it. You don't have to pray. Love me, I will grant it. You don't have to what? pray. Love me. You don't have to fast. Love me. <laughs> so, you see, it doesn't mean don't fast. You fast because you want to spend time with God, not because some, somebody is doing something and you want to do the person shaging. So how do I know, quickly, let's go to these things. How do I know that I'm losing my love for God? Number one, when my soul does not long for times of rich fellowship with God through his word or in prayer. How do I know that I'm losing my love for God? Number one, when my soul does not long for times of rich fellowship with God through his word or in prayer. Mark 12, 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. I'm talking about this one, soul. When my soul does not long for times of rich fellowship with God through his word or prayer. Hallelujah. What does it mean? That means when your mind, your will, and emotions wander from devotion to God and choose other experiences. When your mind, your will, and emotions wander from devotion to God and choose other experiences or other interactions with people more than times with God, then we saw that you, you are losing your love for God. When your soul now is looking for other things, most of you used to come for Friday prayer meetings and things like that. Now you don't come again. You don't come again. I say, come and let's pray for the church to grow. You don't have time for it. You won't come. 
the wonders. You can spend time with people. You go to church, you are watching time. Mm. Pastor, no, I tell you, mumpo, 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 mumpo. But when, when, when you go and visit your friends, even when they want you to go, you still want to say, oh, let's watch one more. Let's, oh, let's drink one more. Let's. No, you are losing your love for God when you do that. James chapter 5, verse number 9. What does it say? It says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double mind. God is saying, if you want to be close to me, I'll be close to you. If you don't want to be close to me, I'll leave you. Hallelujah. So if you forsake your fellowship with God, your awareness of your true condition before God will grow dull. When you forsake your relationship with him, you know, that's how come people are now reasoning with God. They, they say that God is a she. Some say God is a woman. What has gender got to do with God? God must be a man or a woman. Number two, how do I know that I'm losing love for God? Number two, when my thoughts don't reflect on Christ during my leisure times, when my thoughts do not reflect on Christ during my leisure times, what does it mean? It means that the things that captivate your thoughts in your free time reveal much about the priorities of your heart. What captivates your heart during your free time? Is it to please God? How many of you fast in this church and think that, ah, the church is not great. I want to go on a fast. Pray for the church. I want, I want to go and share fries. I want to do this. I want to do this. And all of us are like that. The things that we make, we make money for things. Oh, but when it gets to God, we don't have time. You know, I have to go for an event. See, whenever you invite somebody to do something for you, and the person chooses any other thing, that is where the person's priority is. You are not. You are not the person's priority. And so don't make the person your priority. I watch everybody in this church. Paul, Apostle Paul, instructed believers regarding their thought life. He says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4, 8. The things you think about, it reveals your love for God. What conversations do you have with your friends? Do you talk about the goodness of God? Do you talk about the love of God? Do you talk about how God has been faithful to you and why both of you must, must, must do things that honor him? I just wanted to please God. It reflected in my treatment of my wife. Number three, when I knowingly give in to desires and temptations that I know does not please God, it means my love for God is going. I knowingly give in to temptations. All of us have temptations, so please. When the beer is chilled and is sweating, it's a serious matter. Over some kebab, it is not easy. If we sacrifice to honor him, he honors us with a blessing because we have gone beyond ourselves to be a blessing. I want you to close your eyes and pray. God, you will be my priority. God, from this day, you will be my priority. I will please you in my work. Even when nobody is there, I'll please you. Even when nobody is there, I'll still please you. I want everybody to pray. God, I'll please you. Sometimes it's difficult, but I'll do the best I can to please you. Help me where I'm weak. Help me to grow in my walk with you and love for you. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. God, help me. Help me to prioritize you. To honor you. That for your sake, I'll speak to my, to, to my, my spouse, to, to people around me well. I'll represent Christ to them. In my conversation, in my interactions with people, Lord, I will be a Christian. Sometimes it will be difficult, but Lord, help me. That when, when I am beside myself, when I cannot control, help me to control. Help me to yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want everybody to pray. God, I will love you. I will love you. I will love you. With everything, my, my finances, my, my life, my meditations will be to please you. To please you before my children. To let them know that prioritizing you is the most important thing. To let them know that you are the most important thing and that my life is transformed on account of your kindness towards me. I want everybody to pray.